I'm saying thank you. For, um, obviously, thank you for inviting me to be here as chair today. But actually, um, thank you much more significantly than that, because I think it was two years ago, not three years ago, Peter, that the conference in Tor Durham took place. Uh, and I came along and I was just at the beginning of my tenure at National Theatre Wales. And um, as was mentioned a moment ago, I'm used to slightly urban settings, or I had been used to slightly urban settings. I've been in Manchester for nine years, London, New York, and I'd also been running a theatre building. And um, I was used to the excitement and the challenges of keeping a building busy and exciting. And I was about to move to Wales, which is partly urban, but partly very much not urban as well, and also give up that building, or I just moved to Wales, and give up that building and be asked to present work in some way for the country as a whole without the building to put it in. And um, it was quite exciting, but also daunting. And when you're in that kind of situation, you look around for inspiration. And one of the most inspiring moments for me during that period of preparation was visiting the Royal Touring Forum conference and learning about the work that the promoters did uh, um, through um, the various schemes, um, but also particularly just within the, the halls and venues that many of you work within. Um, because what became very clear to me was that the way that arts work, certainly on this circuit, is through a sense of hosting and through a sense of belonging and ownership. Um, and I thought, hearing the various speakers, like the um, lady who just spoke a moment ago, talk about the way that they invited work into their communities, and also going to see some of the work that was on there in Durham and the way that audiences were welcomed, um, gave me really a, a very strong clue as to how we should run National Theatre Wales, and the idea that all of the work should feel not like it had been delivered to, not like it had landed upon, but like it had been invited and hosted. So for me, the journey of the next two years was very much about finding a way to apply those principles that in many ways I learned from you to the work of a national theatre. And the presentation I'm going to do now is um, the journey, in a way, of, um, of that exploration over the first year of our work. And I know that the conference theme is about extending the reach. So I'm also going to look at some of the ways in doing that in which we try to extend the reach of our work, reach new audiences, reach new communities and engage different artists and people with theatre. Um, so those two themes will be going on, but as I say, perhaps the most important one is to say um, I felt at the end uh, of the conference a couple of years ago that I've been issued a challenge to be as good as you guys are at hosting and presenting work. Um, so this is my report on my homework since then. Um, a year and a bit ago now, National Theatre Wales launched on an adventure, um, and I'm going to start at the end of that adventure. Um, we said that we present uh, a year of shows, one show a month, every month, each one in a new place, and each one creating theatre in a different way. But very importantly, and I think, um, again, relating very much to what you do, we said that each of those pieces of work would feel like it belonged in the place that we were making it. We used words like located theatre, site-specific sometimes, but first and foremost, it was that sense of belonging that was important. We did, um, in, we said we'd do 12 shows, in the end we did 13, because we got a bit greedy. And this is an image from our final show, um, which took place in the fairly non-rural setting of Patalbas, uh, Easter this year. Um, it was a restaging of the Passion Play, reimagined for a contemporary and set, in many ways secular audience by the poet Owen Shears, and conceived and uh, by and starring Michael Sheen. Now, um, this is an image from the, the beginning of the three-day performance. Um, they involved about 3,000 people on the beach, um, welcoming a character called the teacher who turned up in the town and was the sort of um, way that we'd reinterpreted the Christ figure. Over the three days of the performance, the audience grew and grew, and people started appearing from every nook and cranny of Patolba, but also um, from, from all over the place, actually, people were flying in from America. Um, uh, by the Saturday, we were filling the shopping centre, um, and at that point, the story had reached the point where the teacher figure was recruiting um, followers, I guess, his version of disciples, um, and by the Sunday, 
there's the, um, the procession for the crucifixion. There were 12,000 people on the streets of Petoba, many of whom, I think it would be fair to say, were not regular theatre goers. <laughs> what seemed to have happened was that the whole town, in a way, had stepped through the looking glass of the show and were taking part and taking their role in the performance as the onlookers, as the, um, the revolutionaries, as the people who were often um, <coughs> shouting, come on, Michael, was a, was a, a familiar chant during this during this walk, um, and generally cheering the whole event along. Um, it may seem, in some ways, a, a big leap from uh, doing work for 200 people in a village hall to having 12,000 pounds, 12,000 pounds? 12,000 people on the streets of Petoba, but actually I don't think it's a big leap at all. I think um, we apply very similar principles to this piece of work as we did to the very first piece of work that we did, which is a show called The Good Night Out in the Valleys, which took place in mining institutes across the valleys of South Wales and was very much aided by Night Out in um, getting us into venues that otherwise we might not have been able to put the work on in. And um, I want to talk today about maybe the three key principles behind our work and the way we've tried to ex extend our reach and make sure there's that sense of welcome and community when we perform. I'm going to tour you through some of the projects we've done and some of the work that we've done behind those projects as well. Um, but before we set off on that journey, I want to maybe use three words to describe the principles that we use. Um, and uh, you can look at how we've applied those principles as I talk about individual shows and projects. And the three words are ones that are very familiar in a way in the arts these days. Um, one word is engagement. The other one is participation, and the third one is empowerment. And they're not words maybe that trip particularly easily off the tongue or that are um, particularly nice to say to people. So I try and think of them um, through slightly more descriptive means as well. When we talk about engagement, we're usually in some way asking people what their stories were, what, what was, um, we're involving their stories somehow in the work that we're doing. We're asking them about their lives and that's become part of the exchange of the event. Whether that's in uh, an improvised piece that a company like uh, Cartoon de Salvo are doing or whether it's in a devised piece of work um, like we did in our Good Night Out in the Valleys piece which looks at local stories and turn them into a show. When we talk about participation, we're usually involving people more actively in the work. We're asking people to get involved in some way as decision makers in the work. They're performing in it or they've actually helped decide what the show is going to look like. And a few of the pieces that I'll show you, not this, least this one in Petolba, involve community members taking part not just in, say, scenes in which they were being directed into, but in scenes in which they helped to decide the story. So, for example, um, in the Petolbert show, there was a wonderful um, scene in a churchyard where Owen, the writer, had worked with um, dozens and dozens of participants to bring to life the story of people who might be buried in that churchyard. And the uh, performers, the community members, stood next to the two tombstones and um, whispered these poems that were the stories of the people that they imagined were under the ground. And the audience could wander through and hear those stories or lean over the wall and hear those stories. That was a decision making because people were deciding what the material would be. It was being shaped by Owen, but it was their decision. And the final area, empowerment, I think again is one of those words that gets thrown around a lot. But for me, basically, it involves um, somebody's ideas actually being at the very heart of a piece. Um, when a community or a group of people has in some way originated the piece of work. So those are the three words that, or the three um, types of activity that I'd like you maybe to keep in mind as we go through the presentation. Um, engagement, that sense that my story is involved. Participation, the engagement that my decisions are involved. And empowerment, the idea that in some, the, the notion that in some way it's my idea that's actually given birth to the whole piece of work. And when we reach that point, I think we can reach some truly extraordinary theatre making and some truly extraordinary exchanges with the communities that we work with or are part of. So that was Petalbert. Um, 
As I say, we did um, work on all sorts of scales. Um, this piece here is by an uh, extraordinary artist, Mark Rees, who, um, if you didn't see this show, is about to do the Welsh um, artist taking a lead project, in which he's going to drag uh, um, Boeing some number, seven something seven, around the streets of Wales, are often um, helped out by the local rugby team, um, and create community performances inside the, the body of the aeroplane. But for this show, um, Mark curated a town for us. He went to the seaside town of Barmouth and explored the stories that existed under the surface of what often, particularly for visitors, can be seen as sometimes a very pretty, but sometimes slightly tacky, seaside town. Um, Mark discovered, that's Mark um, performing the role of Tommy Nutter, who was a, a Savile Row tailor, who was big in the 1960s in the flower power movement, and that actually turned out to come from Barmouth. Um, this is a, a, a lady, Jean, who contributed her memories of uh, a, a loved one that she'd lost in the war, a man that she was in love with that she'd lost in the Second World War. This is my favourite scene in the whole piece, actually. It's where Jean danced with Kai Thomas, who's a wonderful Welsh dancer and choreographer, who was playing the part of the, um, of the young man that she lost. So you can imagine what an extraordinary and uh, moving event that was, um, both for both of them, and for an audience who watched that piece um, in, a, in a rather tacky nightclub on the seafront in Barmouth. You can just about see the, the nightclub behind. Um, an important thing about the, the theme of hosting in there, the show started off in a village hall, um, that's Guillermo, who played the French sailor, who was also a legendary figure in Barmouth. Um, but the whole piece started off um, with a tea hosted by the Women's Institute. Um, so the audience was first of all welcomed to Barmouth and on the journey by the WI, and we had lovely tea and cakes, and then Guillermo jumped onto the table and started the performance. That was our show in um, June last year, and I firmly believe that a lot of the techniques that made um, the Passion in Patolba a success for 12,000 people were learned during that show in Barmouth.